Welcome back to Alyssa's Movie Takes. We're going to take a dive into Season 2, Episode 6 of The Chosen. Here's my review. There's a lot that I take issue with. Uh, I've slept on it. I still have a lot of issues with this particular episode. But let's start with some positive before we get into the critique. So my favorite moment in 6, Unlawful, is when Matthew and Simon find Mary particularly because we get to see a compassion in Matthew that has only been hinted at so far, and now we get to see it on full display. Now, it is tied in the show, as Dallas and Ryan Swanson have written it, that he has a crush on Mary, and this is part of the reason that maybe sending Matthew and Simon might be okay, since if Matthew and Mary do end up together, it might be a reasonable thing for Jesus to say, well, I want Matthew to be able to step up into his manhood and help Mary in this situation. And also in that thought process, Simon acts more like a bodyguard than really a participant in this whole thing. Anyway, Matthew is the one who's really in there with Mary as she's in her lowest state. Some of the dialogue in that scene felt really genuine, and I believed that Matthew would have convinced Mary to go back with them, even though at first she really didn't want to. And the other part that I found good but not great was the hug between Mary and Jesus. So this is where I got the most emotional last night, and I stand by it. And I'll talk more about it's, it matters that Jesus just forgave her and didn't deal with those two moments before her. But that moment of forgiveness did move me. It was good. So now let's move into the critique and start with the off-screen excitement. So there's a lot in this two-part story that is off screen. So in Spirit in Five, the Mary Rama conversation is off screen and even Mary being alone in the woods is off screen, which might've been good to see. In this second episode, the arrest of John the Baptist is off screen, which I think is a huge mistake. That's a big moment in John's life and in the life of his friends in this show, they, they list Andrew and Philip as his friends and Jesus as close as a close cousin that this should have been on screen, both him confronting Herod, him getting arrested, maybe even him getting beat up a little bit, and then Philip, Andrew, and Jesus finding out the news and grieving together. That would have been great to all see. But by the time they get the news, it's already they've already found out it's off screen. I think that was a mistake. I also think it was a mistake to have Simon and Matthew wake up from their search at the beginning of the episode, rather than going straight from Jesus to start the hunt to actually playing a little bit of hide and seek of maybe there's some danger or maybe they get lost or or something more than thus they wake up in the morning after searching for her all night and Matthew's disgusted by the clothes that he's now wearing because he was lying in, in, you know, dung and Simon's kind of poking fun at him. The momentum was lost of them walking away to go find Mary if they just show them waking up the next day, not even really showing the search through the night, which would have been interesting because they're in a strange city. It's Matthew and Simon, and the dynamic would have been much more interesting if they could have really played that hide and seek game. Okay, so my second point. Where did Caleb go? Jesus miraculously exercises this demon from Caleb a demon named Belial. And then the two disciples take him away to sort of tend his wounds, which why didn't Jesus heal him? Two of the wounds? I don't know. It seemed like it would have made sense. But then he's just off screen. We never see him again. And the disciples at the same time don't get to have any reaction to this exorcism. Mary was exercised of demons in season one, but it didn't look like what happened when Caleb was delivered. It looked a little different. And Jesus had to be a little bit more forceful and use words of getting out. When he used it with Mary, he just touched her head. But the disciples, as far as we know, because they haven't shown it to us yet, have not seen this. How is it possible that they aren't just talking this over, that this isn't the weirdest thing that's ever happened to them? And, oh my goodness, what did they just sign up for and give their lives to? And this is this is part of it? I didn't realize that this was part of it. They're not talking about this? There's no reaction from the disciples whatsoever? That goes back into what I said in, in my first video, that there should be some church after church here. Because whether it's the disciples talking about it or whether it's Jesus talking about it with them, this would have freaked them out. And it's part of the main plot line of episode five. It doesn't even play into episode six at all. And this is going to be a big part of Jesus' ministry, but it's also the strangest part to people who've never seen it. 
they should have had some time to react there. And I just want to say that I think that Anthony Michael Irizarry, and I apologize if I botched your last name, you did a great job playing Caleb in episode five. I would have really liked to see you, see you restored in episode six. And I'm, I'm sad that we didn't get to see that. And maybe, and maybe have some Jesus Caleb time, just like there was some Jesus Simon the Zealot time. What happens after someone is freed from a demon? We see that a little bit with Mary. But it would have been nice to see it again with somebody different who's in a different situation. And does he remember that life? You know, do they do they remember when they were possessed? Do they remember certain things about their life? Does he remember just attacking them? Does he have to does he have to just kind of release that? Would he have followed Jesus right away because it was such a drastic change? These are just questions that I think are unanswered by just having Caleb dis disappear off screen right away. Okay, the next thing. I really didn't like the conversation between Rayma and Mother Mary, or Mary Mother. Mary Mother? Mother Mary? Mother May I? <laughs> uh, so anyway, I didn't like that conversation. Why? Because Rayma has serious questions, the questions that I had about why isn't Jesus going after them. And Mary seems like she brushes it off with the Bible verse. You know, as she, as she, Rayma has serious questions. And Mary just says, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. And it seems like a platitude. It doesn't seem like it has depth. It doesn't seem like it gives Rhema understanding. It just seems like, for lack of a better phrase, it's trying to use a Bible verse to shut somebody up. And I don't think that's when we are supposed to, I don't think that's the way that scripture is intended to be used. I feel the same way. Similar, I feel a similar way about Jesus ending the conversation with Matthew of what verse did Philip give you? I'm going to paraphrase this here because I don't have it completely memorized. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed deep in the depths, you are there. That there's no explanation. It's just the verse. So these verses, instead of being helpful, come across as platitudes and as a way to not address serious issues, especially because, and I'm going to kind of land my, my five video here, is... There's no reason why these other disciples and Jesus can't go look for Mary. These guys have a protective instinct too. She's their friend. And this episode, they're just sitting around the camp. The, the dialogue just comes across as characters trying to figure out why they're doing something that doesn't really make sense. They're all sort of talking. Why are we sitting around camp when Mary's missing? It just doesn't ring true. And I, I got pretty mad at that scene going, oh, this is insufficient. This does not make sense. This is insufficient. This is insufficient. No, it doesn't answer all the questions. No, it doesn't actually sit right. No, there's something missing here. Okay. So real training would be, maybe it's quippy. Maybe Jesus gives them something quippy and they realize later that what he said is actually going to help them in a moment, but neither of these verses actually is going to help them in a moment. It doesn't give them training. It doesn't give them insight into how to respond. Sometimes God will tell us something and it doesn't make sense until later, but usually it's instructive or it's something that's going to make us have a tool in our tool belt that we can bring up in a certain moment. And because again, there's no debrief in either episode with Jesus and the disciples that the training piece of this is lost and it comes across as platitudes. So they wrote this not as really a panic attack or a breakdown. They wrote this as a relapse. But because they tied this so much to her PTSD and they focused on the addiction rather than the PTSD and the underlying causes of that, so the sexual assault and then the demoniac showing up on screen and knowing who she is, she comes back, she gets forgiven, but I still don't think she's healed because she didn't get to go to those deep, dark places with Jesus and talk it out or cry it out or scream it out and let the heart have its day. She didn't get to do that because what he did was he hugged her and he forgave her, which is dealing with the self-medication part, but it's not dealing with the fear of the Roman soldier because she was once sexually assaulted by one. It's not dealing with the fact that this demon knew her name in the middle of Jesus camp. I will bring that point back up again. She is part of the group again. She's with Jesus, but she hasn't dealt with her core issues and Jesus hasn't dealt with her core issues. And so where do I land on, is this character affecting from episode five and episode six? I think Jesus wants people saved and healed. And Mary comes back 
and she's saved again, but he doesn't heal her heart completely of all that trauma. He just forgives her. And at the same time, this was an annoying line. I didn't like that they had Jesus mourning by himself when Andrew and Philip are outside as John's best friends too. And the first thing he says to Mary is, there's a lot going on. Ugh. That's the same thing that was true in the last time, which is why he didn't catch her until she was already gone because there was a lot going on. That's frustrating. So I have to land with episodes six, five and six that there is a lack in Jesus that I don't think would actually be there. Jesus would have taught better. He would have met Mary in her deep grief when she comes back, either before she leaves or when she comes back. And he would have helped the disciples process or given them space to process exorcism as they'd never seen it before. And the fact that one of their closest friends had disappeared and now comes back clearly a worse for the wear. And I will end by saying, sadly, I am homesick for season one. Why? What's different about season one that I'm not seeing as much in season two? Long-term story arcs. I don't see them as much. In season one, the particularly long story arcs were with Matthew and with Nicodemus. They had really nice buildup. So in season one and the sixth episode where the man is lowered into the house and he's healed, the paralytic is healed, that brings Nicodemus's story to a head and it brings Matthew's story to a head. It puts them both ready to have an encounter with Jesus. In this season, there's no character that has growth, major growth over the course of the season. Everything feels a lot more episodic. So I'm missing, I mean, I miss Nicodemus. I miss Eden as a character. I know she's coming back, but she was a, a stabilizing presence in season one. Even Simon, it took him, I'm going to say it took him three episodes to get to the point where he had an encounter of Jesus because episode three in the first season isn't really about Simon at all. It's just about Jesus and the children. But there was this idea that everything was sort of building slowly towards something. And now we're not really building towards something. They've introduced Philip, they've introduced Nathaniel, and then they kind of pushed him to the side. They introduced Simon the Zealot, but Jesse was the more interesting of the two characters, and Simon's the one that ends up as a disciple, and so now he's part of the group, and now you have a lot of disciples and not much character development, which might be understandable, but I think that they could have done more with building up certain characters or certain moments over the course of the season so that it had more of the feel of the first one where everything is building towards something. Anyway, that's my take on episode six with a little bit of episode five. Pretty major critique. What's your take? Let me know in the comments below and I'll talk to you soon.